touching that down here is, is the business side. It's easy enough to be, you can be good at the DJ sort of part of it. Who deals with the business side? Who deals with your sort of PA, PR? Like that. Yeah, well, that, that again, it, it's good to have an agent. Well, I, I, I've had an agent for many, many years, uh, for about 20 years, and the agent looks after the bookings and makes sure that you're looked after. So there's no squabbling with promoters that you know are not being professional about their approach. The agent to take care of that, so that allows the artist to be creative. The same in in, in many creative industries, and that's also a very reassuring place to be. When you're starting out, you can get ripped off. You can walk all over. You know, it's 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 treacherous business to be in. It's like fashion. Uh, 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 because there's a lot of insecurities. There's a lot of egos flying about. Highly competitive nature. Uh, the strong survive. And if you're determined to do do that, and that's your life path, and you're really gunning for it, then you get there. It might you know, it might take three years, or it might take 13 years. But those that hang in there get to the objective generally. It's all a state of mind. It's your state of mind. You know, it's commi committing, setting the intention, taking massive action daily. It's all about taking action daily, not next week or I might do it then or, yeah, well, in the future that's going to happen. It's about, no, it's going to happen now. And what am I going to do today to make that happen? And what am I going to do tomorrow to make that happen? And how many, how many hours in my 16 hours that I'm awake during the day am I committing to this business and this project whatever that is and that's the thing also that is that that's also key to it mindset broadcasting broadcasting you're into that now well, how do you get into the business of broadcasting again I think there was a little bit of there was a little bit of luck in there and there was also a, a bit of networking a friend of mine a chap called Nicky Holloway I used to be his assistant I was an apprentice to him and um he was friends with another uh, uh, guy, Gordon Mack, who ran a station called Kiss FM. It was a London pirate. And he used to have this show where, uh, during the show, people would send in their top threes. So I, I used to love this show, and I sent a top three in, and he liked it. And then he spoke to Nicky and said, well, actually, I've got this top three from this guy. Do you know him? And he said, yeah, he's my assistant. And then I got a show on there late at night at two in the morning when no, there was probably probably about five cab drivers in London listening and a couple of blokes on the night shift. But hey, I was on the radio, I got a foot in the door. That was my way in and I stayed there on that show at, you know, some unearthly hour. Uh, I need to get up and work in the morning as well. And I stayed there for probably about two years on that, on that time slot and then progressed through the ranks and then got a... Uh, a better slot earlier in the evening, then I've got a weekend slot in the morning, and then that just uh, progressed from there really. So right up, up to Radio 1. I, mean, I started on a, on a pirate station, which was... I want to be a really, really... Sorry guys, can we just con continue here? We're just trying to focus. Unless you want to come on camera. Yes, I like it. Would you like to say a few words? Yes. He looks like a rock star, doesn't he? <laughs> Come on, you're not speechless as a rock star. Which one are you talking about? Well, some obscenities. Rock stars normally have obscenities like flowing. What are you talking about with Margaret Thatcher? There's children watching, by the way. Yes, okay. I've not used the airport once. Right. That's it? All right. No, no, no. All right, cool. Right, now we have to continue here. Okay. All right. Tommy Cooper. Tommy Cooper. Right. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. Frozen Bolt. No, no, Frozen Bolt. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Did you bring this guy? <laughs> Flight, <laughs> flightless Bolt. Flight, flightless Bolt. Flightless Bolt. Native of Iceland. Okay. Right. Frozen Chicken. <laughs> hey, thanks, Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good one. It was worth the wait, eh? <laughs> we're not Radio 1 here, I think. <laughs> yeah, I think you must have heard Radio 1, but uh, where were we? Now where were we? You get to Radio 1? Yeah, through, through Pirate Radio. It's starting on Pirate Radio. Again, you know, doing it for the love of doing it. You're getting a cab there, not, not getting paid for what you're doing. You're getting a cab home late at night in South London. You know, when we get on buses, the records and walking, so... I used to get a cab home from there, but so uh, yeah, again, it's just following passion and sticking with it, and then progress happens. How do you find time to enjoy yourself? What does enjoy How do I find time to enjoy myself? Well, I enjoy myself daily because I think life is such a gift, it's such a blessing that every minute of my life I, I cherish. I really do. I truly cherish it, and 
as time has moved on and you know, I have a son and cherish it even more. But I had, a, I had a car accident many years ago and that really woke me up to the fact that, hey, you know, you can you sail close to the breeze there and life, you know, life is, is to be enjoyed every moment. And, you know, it's something that I, I can't get my head around is when people say, I'm bored. I think that, that word, that term bored should be banished from society. Because I think people don't think about that, you know, in a sense, you know, I'm bored. Well, find something that you like and then start enjoying it. Yeah. It's all about, again, it's language that's used. You're telling yourself, I'm bored. What are you going to be? You're going to be bored. Oh, then, oh, I'm excited. I'm really loving this. I'm going to have a great time doing it. So that in itself, again, you know, it's just those, the, 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 the language that we use and what, what we tell ourselves. I don't know how I got onto that, actually, about that one. <laughs> I'm <laughs> going to go in there. We're just channeling something else there. You actually uh, tell me about something that happened to you. Yeah, I had, yeah, as I said, I, I had a car accident many years ago and I came close to the edge and it just uh, made me realise how much, you know, how, how to value my own life and, you know, not be re reckless and, and, and just enjoy every moment of it and make the most of it and whatever you want to do in life, you can do it. Most things, you know, okay, you know, if you're 40 years old, you want to be David Beckham, then maybe that's not going to happen, you can still play Pro, you know, semi-pro or whatever. Most things you want to do and you set your mind to it, you can do it, really. It's, it's all in the mind. So that turning point also really shifted my thought process. My whole mindset shifted. It was like, wow, okay, I'm not stopping at any door that is closed in my way. So I think that that was very pivotal in who I am today. After many years of struggling and then that happened, my whole life changed. And a lot of great things happen out of, out of that traumatic experience. Can I round off and ask you something? Yes. Stage fright. You know, I've got a thing I've just set up called a Frichter scale. Yeah. Now in Scotland we call it a Frichter. A fright is a Frichter. Right. <laughs> a Frichter. <laughs> <laughs> on a scale of 1 to 10, yeah. before you go on stage, yeah. 1 is so cool, 10 is really, oh god, I could run away and see mum. Where are you in the 1 to 10 scale? Depends on where you are, really, and you know who you're playing with and yeah. how many people. I have to say, on the one to ten scale in there earlier with, with all the little people, I was like, oh my god, you know, it's like, what are we going to do here? So I guess I didn't want to run home to mum. I, I may have, but I don't know. So that was probably about a six, I guess. Yeah. I think I think I had a little bit more stage fright on that uh, experience than I did walking out in any arena with ten thousand people. But there was a time. When, get very very nervous and it affected the way I played. As I moved into bigger arenas it, it, it really kind of there was a time where I just got so overcome with nerves at the time. You know I'd be drinking beers to like calm my nerves which had an adverse effect, you know, having like ten beers before going on. Not a good move. Yeah. Not a good move. So uh, again with the experience of it you, you adjust to it and, and you do become more confident with it. I mean we're all gifted in you know, our in our own different ways and we all have different levels of nerves and anticipation and I think it's, it's good to be nervous, it's healthy to be nervous and it really is, it pushes you further, you know, you get up, you know, just so it's all matter of fact and coffee but it's like, well it is matter of fact, isn't it? But it's good to have that little bit of adrenaline and anticipation when you're going on, it certainly lifts it, it lifts the energy. Hi, this is Danny Brampling, well respected British DJ here at the Wicker Man Festival in sunny Scotland.